Good morning and welcome back. We got such a nice comments and good positive go for it um, reviews after our first video. We thought we'd come back and show you some more things today. And um, one of our favorite things is something you probably have at home and it's been around for a long time. It's called the Log Cabin Trim Tool. And um, when this tool came out, we decided we would use it to create our quilt that was featured in Quilt Sampler last May. We needed something simple that a lot of people could work on that would come out even. And the idea of a trim tool and not a ruler is that you get to trim it after you sew it as opposed to cut it before you sew it. It eliminates the um, degree of accuracy and it makes it a lot more fun. So this little trim tool comes in three sizes. We have a little tiny four inch, we have a six inch, and we have an eight inch. We chose to use the eight inch when we were making our quilt and we had a number of people work on it and it all came out even at the end. So since a lot of people are not able to come see us right now and not able to enjoy these beautiful fabrics, you might drag out some of the stuff you have at home and wonder what you're going to do with it. We're going to cut it up and make some interesting quilts. So with the, the um, trim tools, with each one of them, regardless of which size, the ruler itself tells you how wide to cut the strips. If they're not exactly accurate, heaven forbid, or if they're um, it just you'll be able to trim it down. All right, the log cabin is one of the blocks that's been around for the longest time. It's an old favorite and everybody loves a log cabin, but I find them difficult to make because you have to pre-cut a lot of directions have you actually pre-cut all of these strips to the same size and that requires accuracy. So for accuracy that takes a lot of the fun out of it. So we've enjoyed this trim tool because it allows me to sew first and then trim so I don't have to cut as accurately, I'm able to trim after. So the typical log cabin, you start with a light and you have a light side and we go around and then we add the dark side. So we have a light and a dark. I've made my first round. Now it's time for my trim tool. If I use the tool, I just put round one right in the center square, use my rotary cutter and cut up and over to trim off the excess. I take the block turn it the other way, the two sides that have not been trimmed, I can come in on round one and finish trimming. So when I do that, all the blocks are the same. So this means that multiple people can work on this quilt and um, they'll all come out great. So for round two, I'm going to, there are my two lights and there are my two darks. So again, once I've put on my lights, there's round one, round two puts on the lights, round two, then I come back with my trim tool, I line it up with round two, and again, I trim up and over, take it, rotate it, and trim round two again, up and over. So when I'm finished, round two is all the same size. I have all of my blocks of the same size. Whether or not I have veered in a little bit, veered out, they're all the same size. So I'm back to my sorry, it's clearly marked, and you're going to sit it right in the middle of the block and you're going to trim all four sides. You don't have to move it, you don't have to rotate. You trim all four sides and then you have your block. Whether you've made them all or whether you've had your buddies make some, they're all going to be the same size. So when you go to stitch them together, you're not having to ooch them or stretch them. They're all going to fit just perfectly together. And then one thing we always do, particularly on these, these trim tools and the smaller they get, is that we press our seams open. It makes our blocks lie flatter, particularly if you're doing the small ones when you get down to do the four inch. They're, you don't have lumpy blocks, they are very flat. And just another hint that I just thought about is that we always use spray starch. It keeps my blocks flat and straight and my fabrics are not stretching. If you prefer more scrappy, this is a great time to dig through all those little pieces. It just doesn't take a lot of fabric to make these, but it's a fun way to combine different ones.
Okay, whatever your favorite group of fabrics is, the log cabin works great, whether it's scrappy, whether it's cave, whether it's 30s. But our personal favorite is Aboriginals. They we carry a number of them in the store. This one was leftover blocks from our quilt because we had three of us working on it and there were always extra blocks. So we took the eight inch block and we just put them together, made a great table runner. We probably have about a hundred pieces of Aboriginal um, fabrics and once you fall in love with them all chopped up they're beautiful tones of fabrics we were this this quilt just in, in case I, I didn't brag enough we were invited to be back um, into quilt sampler magazine for a second time and we chose the log cabin and of course we chose the aboriginal because again those are some of our favorite fabrics but whatever you choose it's the trim tool that makes it easy and we appreciate you sitting through this again, and we'll look forward to some more of those great comments. Thanks. <laughs>